start out pretty, Coach. I mean, own the sixth goal to start. Uh, nine uh, scored nine to twenty-one before you called a timeout. What was in the game plan? I mean, I know Hiawas is very athletic, mm-hmm. kind of streaky team. What was the, you know, the game plan going? In? Well, we we obviously didn't want him to get as comfortable as they got early, and and our defensive pressure got turned up a little bit. We made some adjustments to how we played when the ball went into the post, and so that took away a lot of their open threes. And um, you know, I thought we did a, a better job in the first part of the half. They just killed us on the rebounds, and then as the half went on, we kind of caught up. I think we we're only down one at half. Actually, uh, had out rebounded them uh, offensively by two. So it was just a matter of of us making a couple of defensive adjustments in how we did things, and then. Um, you know, guys, just we, we just started making shots, and once we make shots, then then we start getting a little more bounce in life on defense as well. You mentioned offensively hitting shots, but you know what was what was changing from an offensive perspective, and maybe even went on a they outscored them seventeen to six or seventeen to seven in the in the final minutes to, to close out the half. What was, what was doing yeah, I think I mean shots just started going down. We we started finding uh, a rhythm, and anytime this group gets in a rhythm, you know they're pretty good and they feed off of each other. And, and when we work to get those open shots and, and, and make we, we talk a lot about multiple actions and making teams defend multiple things within a series of, of play. And, and they, when they do that, they're tough to defend. And um, you know we had a lot of good shots in the first five, seven minutes of the half. They just wouldn't go in the basket. So a lot of it is just getting that range, comfort, rhythm, and then you know one turns into two, and you get a stop, and you get a third one, et cetera. So I don't think there was any magic formula or adjustment. It was just the guys got comfortable and started knocking down shots. All right, Casey, let's start with you. First of all, let's just let's start off with what was what was kind of going through your mind. You know, this being the last home game, uh, last time that, that you'll be out in front of the fans. What, just take me through some of the thoughts. Um, well, obviously, you know, it's it's sad in a way. You know, this is our last time we get to play in front of our home fans, and you know. Uh, we'll have one more game together as a team, but uh, you know it's definitely winding down, and that that's really where it kicks in uh, tonight. But uh, we had a great great team effort, um, and that's what we've been you know oriented around. When we have team numbers, when we have even scoring, when we're uh, looking for each other, getting assists, that's when we play at our best. So that was definitely our focus coming in. We uh, some of the guys were commenting on the sideline that all three of you made certain plays tonight that were wow, that's very uncharacteristic. The one for you was. Um, the, the Dr. J underneath the basket, <laughs> opposite hand off the glass. Mm-hmm. Kind of just take me through that play. What you know? What well, it was it was their biggest player, and he's their best shot blocker. And I knew he was going to come and block it on the near side, so that was my only open option, really. So I just kind of went for it. What, what's the biggest thing that you're going to remember about being a Bruin, being part of the program? Oh, uh, really, just coming together as a team. Um, in high school, you kind of you're, you're friends because you always see them around, but in college, it's kind of you don't really see each other around campus, but when you come together during practices and uh, team events and, and games and traveling, that's when you really come together and you become a family in that way. All right, Zach. <coughs> you, uh, kind of the same, uh, same first question, really. What was, what was going through your head starting today? Um, actually, it's funny. Somebody asked me that earlier today. Um, and honestly, for me, it was just like, I'm just going to treat this as every other game. I know um, it's easy to kind of sit back and think, hey, this is my last time. Um, but it, that's not going to help me play necessarily better, or and it, and it might make make me play worse. I don't know. So I just was going to go in like, hey, I've had great times. So now that there's webcasts, I can go back and watch the games and relive it with my children and stuff like that. So I wasn't really worried. Um, I was just it'll like, for a while. well, yeah, it'll be a while. Um, but I was just saying, like, you know, I'm just going to go out there and treat it like every other game. Um, and I thought I think we came out and played well. Um, obviously a slow start, but it worked out well. Yeah, particularly, it took you a couple of, of threes. Yeah. To win. Um, well, I knew, um, in warmups, I was kind of having some struggles getting the ball in the rim. I might, I have had, my knees kind of been bothering me recently and that kind of is making me throw off my jump shot a little bit. So I just had to focus on slowing down a little bit. So it just took me a couple of shots to get in rhythm. And, um, I don't know that third one, as soon as it left, I was like, oh no, that's going in. So from there on, it was just good. And they started running out to the three, um, a lot. So that kind of opened me up to drive in a little bit more, which, you're probably going to ask the next question. It's a little uncharacteristic of me. Um, but I think that's going to be part of the game as it progresses. If I keep knocking down threes, they're going to come closing out, and that will open up driving lanes for me to either make it to the bucket or dish it off to Kyle. What is the one thing that you remember or will remember most about the program? Um, 
Jason had a good point when he said um, just the team environment, like he said, when we don't see each other on campus. I mean, he's a computer science major. I'm a health fitness rec major. Don't really see much of him at all. But we really enjoy times when we get together. Um, and always a Piedmont game from last year will always be in my head as one of the one of the coolest parts of my college career. And we'll see. Yeah, that was good. All right, Evan, let's, uh, same kind of three questions for you. We'll start with the first one. Um, you know, you have a, a different role than the, these other guys. Is that you're kind of a spark plug off the bench? So, mm. so talk about you know playing in the last game. What, what was going through your mind at the end of the game? Well, obviously there was a lot of emotions, and the other guys hit on them. Um, you're excited. Um, it's kind of a bittersweet thing. Uh, you're looking forward to it, but on the other hand, it's, it is kind of sad, like Jason said, because it's your last opportunity to play in front, front of a great crowd and a great fan base. And But coming in, you just try to channel all those things, and you try to keep them on the outside, but um, it's kind of difficult. So when you get into the moment, you just try to feed off of it and let it, um, let it influence you to play better and to focus more. And I think we were maybe a little jittery at the beginning. Um, I know I was a little bit kind of hyped up. But I think once we settled in and started playing the game that we can play, um, we really capitalized and our defense stepped up and our communication and all the things we know we can do well. So. Five and threes in the second half kind of sparked an offensive run. Uh, for you, you know, again, as we mentioned before, coming off the bench in particular, <clears throat> how do you feel that you can come in and, and help the offense by, by knocking down a big shot? Well, that's kind of my responsibility, and the coaches – um, tell me that and my teammates trusted me to do that so that's what I need to do when I come in, come in the game and Jason had a great drive on the baseline and it was funny because as soon as he drove I kind of knew it was going to come to me uh, we practiced that exact thing a lot in practice and so he gave me a perfect pass and I was able to knock it down and um, it you know it's it's great when you can do your role well and the other guys did a great job of that tonight <clears throat> Um, I mean, obviously, the team unity. Um, this is one of the tightest knit group of guys you're going to find. And, um, you know, we go through rough times, of course, in practice when we get mad at each other. But um, you can always tell a great team because you're able to overcome that. And um, I think we do a good job of that. And we're able to always focus and come together during the games. And then also just um, the environment on the home floor and all the support and the fans. And um, it's just an amazing experience when you're able to play in front of them and I know we're going to miss that a lot but it's been a great opportunity and we're really thankful for it. No big deal. All right, let's pass it all the way back down to Kelly. It's like stuck on my leg. Yeah, a few more things and then we'll <coughs> don't worry next year we're going to have more microphones. <laughs> 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 and coach particularly uh, in the second half when you started to stretch it out a little bit more with the lead um, what were some of the reasons that you were able to, to stay on top and then I think we started um, putting stops together on defense, and I think it was um, us really um, executing offensively. And, and these guys were on the bench saying, hey, Coach, can we run a little bit more? And it's like, yeah, let's go. They are starting to, to be a step slow a little bit because they were tired. And I thought our guys did a nice job of pushing. Um, we struggled a little bit, closing out the game, rebounding. We just kept giving up offensive rebounds, but overall, Really closed the gap, and and you know we only got a, out rebounded by five, uh, and a lot of that I think was towards the end of the game. For some reason, we just couldn't get a board. Um, we executed well. We got to the free throw line, made some free throws, but ultimately I think it was you know it was just the execution on the offensive end after we we got stops on the defensive end, and you know next thing you know we're up twelve, and then kind of finished the game up twelve. Uh, two more questions. The first being. 16 and 14 to win tonight ensures a, a winning season no matter what happens in, in the regional playoff. Um, but what does that say about second year program and a winning season? Well, first of all, you know, the it, we've just been blessed. You know, God has given us some games this year that we quite honestly could have lost. But these guys put it together and, and made plays at the end. And I, I told them in the locker room after the game that I thought this game was the epitome of, of our season. We struggled early. You know, we were competitive, but we struggled. And then we kind of clawed and scratched our way to a two-point lead at half, came out, turned it over three possessions in a row, but, you know, got some stops on the defensive end and then ultimately just kind of hit that spurt where we pushed it out to a 12-point lead. That's kind of what we did this year as a team. Um, you know, these guys were a huge part of that. Um, playing well 
you know, God sent us uh, Larry and Curtis, you know, as, as transfers and, and then our freshmen that came in. It was just, you know, we, we took good steps personnel-wise. And then these guys made huge improvements and, and, and just buying into their roles this year. And uh, it was just a, it was a team effort. I mean, it was, it was them doing it – was, it was each player doing what they were capable of doing. And each night, uh, you know, we, we found another guy to step up and, and make a play. And tonight, you know, it, there was something all three of these guys did that stepped up to make a play. So it was good to see them do that and go out, you know, with not only winning – but also feeling that they had a significant part of that win. Yeah. Um, what's, what's one thing that you will remember collectively about these three guys? <clears throat> well, they put up with me for two years, <laughs> uh, which is, is it's hard because they're in the middle of their life, okay? Um, they're uh, sophomores in college and are finding out that we're going to have intercollegiate athletics. And then I come in and tell them, basically, your life is mine now. And, and I'm going to give you a schedule, and I'm going to make you do this, and I'm going to make you do that. And they, they said, okay. And they, I know they didn't always enjoy what we had them do, but because they were willing to do those things and, and work hard, uh, these guys, you know, they, they put us in a position to be successful and came out of last year with a lot of encouragement and enthusiasm and worked hard this summer and got in this year and just continued to improve. And, you know, we're playing our best basketball now. And uh, that's in large part attributed to these guys and their leadership and hard work. Last question, we'll be done. What is the, uh, you know, the season is not over. We have uh, three games coming up. What's, what's kind of between now and then, what are going to be the biggest areas of work that we're going to work on? For this? Yeah, I think one of the things we're going to do is we're going to let them get some rest. Uh, we're going to let the bodies heal a little bit. We got a little nicks, you know, nicks and bumps and bruises. So we'll do some more individual type stuff rather than team things. Um, try to give them a chance to let their bodies recover, not get rusty, but uh, then really, you know, when we come together as a team, uh, work very, very hard to uh, be sharp and ready to go. Um, you know, we're looking at a regional tournament at Southern Westland. There's still a lot of scenarios out there, but we're definitely going to be one of the higher seeds in the tournament at this point. It looks like, based on um, you know the teams that are playing in AIA or NCAA two, they're going into their tournaments. Um, and then some teams that didn't do as well this year who aren't even – they're not going to be coming to the regional tournament. So, you know, we've got a chance to go in as one of the higher seeds and, and potentially, you know, uh, play, uh, um, you know, for not just, you know, for the experience in that first year like we did last year and played a great game against Shorter, but actually play and, and try to win this region. And that's, a, that's crazy to even think about in year two. But, um, you know, we're just going to prepare and, and do the very best. And if we get one game, we're going to try to make it the best game we've played. If we are blessed and get another game, we're going to try to make that the best game we've played and then, you know, just leave it all on the court. And uh, I expect these three guys will have a big part of whatever success we have. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen.